Hi, this is Alistair Lee, and in this short video created with Adobe Captivate, I'm going to look at distributing and tracking Adobe Connect recordings. Your recordings for all of your meetings are stored with your meeting, so to access a recording, simply go to the Meetings tab, select the persistent meeting that you've used to record, uh, and then there's a recordings link that's associated with that meeting. Now, since it's a persistent meeting, you'll notice that you can have multiple recordings all associated with that single meeting. They're all available here. If you want to get a URL to distribute that recording, simply click on the appropriate recording and you'll see there is a URL. Now, if I head back here, you'll notice that by default, the access is marked as private. And that means that the meeting recording basically has the same permissions as the meeting room itself. So if you go to your meeting room uh, edit participants, which I'll do right now, you'll notice that uh, very often you'll be the only uh, person invited to your meeting room. You'll be set up as the host. You may or may not have some other people invited to your meeting room. And only the people in this list by default will be able to access your recording if your uh, meeting room required these people to log in. So if I go back to recordings here, this recording is only available to those people in that list. If I want to make it available to anybody, I can simply select the meeting recording itself and choose the Make Public button. And as you can see, the access changes to public. This means now that anybody with the URL is able to access that recording. As some people have asked if there are ways to set the permissions at a more granular level, not open it up to everybody in the world, but control who's got access to it. And we can actually do that by moving the recording to your content library. To do that, I'm going to select the recording itself, and I'm going to choose this Move to Folder button. And by default, uh, Adobe Connect will ask to put this in your content library, just in the root of your content library. Uh, in the case of my content library, I've got a lot of content in here. And so I've set up some folders, including a folder for meeting recordings, that I can use just to store my different meeting recordings. I'm going to select that folder and click the Move button. And once that's done, I'll just hit OK. And now that recording is no longer directly associated with this meeting. If I want to access that recording, I now need to go up to the Content folder. Uh, and again, in my case, I put it in this Meeting Recordings folder. So I'm going to click on that. And here's the meeting recording that we just moved, Distributing and Tracking Adobe Connect Recordings. So if I go ahead and click on this meeting recording, uh, I've still got the same URL, and I can move this uh, even after I've distributed that URL. The URL won't change, and the uh, URL will still work. But now I've got the ability to set the permissions at a more granular level for this recording. So I'm going to go ahead and customize the permissions. In this case, I don't want to allow public viewing, so I'm going to keep the default here to no, not allowing public viewing. But I've got the ability now to search for specific people that I want to add to my recording, to give them access, basically, to view this recording. So I can type in somebody's name as an individual, or I can type in an entire group's name if I want to give everybody in sales or everybody in marketing access to this recording, or even everybody in the company, I can do so. And that way, the recording is available to anybody in the company, but not available outside of the company. So you can have much more granular uh, permissions once you move your recording into your content library. Uh, there's no save button. This happens automatically. Uh, it can just move off of this page now and that is already saved. There is a reports button which is nice. So I can now also access how many people have viewed my recording. So in this case this is a brand new recording. It hasn't been viewed at all. Uh, but I can keep track now of how many views this recording has had. It is actually possible to view the views of a recording that is associated with the meetings. If I go back to my meetings, I'm going to click on that same persistent meeting room we were looking at before and choose the Recordings tab. Um, when we click on a, a meeting recording in this, uh, in this section here, by default, I can't see the reports. There is a reports uh, icon or a reports link but this actually gives me the reports for the meeting room, not for the meeting recording. So I can see how many unique sessions I've had, how many uh, users I've invited. But I can't actually see the reports or the number of views for this particular recording, because this is the reports for my entire meeting.
If you do want to view the, uh, the views for the recording, you can actually use the API, a special API call. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to click on this recording that I want to have a report on. And you'll notice there's a lot of information up here in my URL. So in this URL, I can see my account ID. And if I scroll over in the uh, URL, I'll come to something called a SCO ID. It's right here, S-C-O dash ID. And I'm just going to copy that just from the, uh, the first number six, uh, just to before the ampersand. I'm just going to copy that into my clipboard. I'll open up a new tab here in my browser, and I'm going to type in a command uh, to use the API. So to do that, I'm going to choose the name of my server. I'm going to type in API, and then the command is XML, question mark, action equals, and we want to report the SCO views, and we're going to give it, so I'll put an ampersand in here, uh, the SCO ID for uh, what we want to do the report on. I'll just say equals, and then we're going to paste that SCO ID and click enter. And using this API call, I can actually see that it's brought up the appropriate meeting recording, and it tells me the number of views for this particular recording. So that's a quick look at distributing your meeting recordings, making them available either to everybody or to a specific group within your organization, and then tracking how many people have viewed that recording. If you want more granular tracking in, in terms of not just the number of aggregate views, but you want to see who's accessed your recording, you could also wrap it in an event using something like the Adobe Connect Events module so that people would have to register to view that recording and you could see specifically who's seen it rather than just the aggregate number of views. But that's a quick look at distributing and tracking Adobe Connect recordings. Thanks for your time.